across the continent. And thank you so much for dialing into our second Web Endeavor for 2021. My name is Nkuli Bokhupa and I'm the COO of Property Management as I have the privilege of hosting you for today's Web Endeavor. Firstly, just two quick notices. Number one, the session is being recorded and will be distributed to you after today's session. Secondly, please note that the content and references of our clients their buildings or portfolios is confidential. And as this is a family meeting with Brawleys internally, we would like to make sure that everything that is shared with you is definitely being kept confidential. Now, with all of that admin out of the way, again, a very warm welcome to today's Web Endeavor, where we, as property management, have been asked by our group CEO, Malcolm Horn to take you through some of the recent experiences of our team relating to the unrest that took place in South Africa just a month ago. Now, as you have seen the scenes, I actually still get shivers just watching and seeing what we had to go through as a country. If I were to share some of my own personal experiences at the time, I can tell you now that nobody, none of us were ready uh, for what transpired in that number of days uh, and, you know, emotionally and from a business point of view, and I think as a country as a whole, um, during that fateful period of July. Now, I recall specifically over that weekend, we were looking forward to the president addressing us regarding COVID lockdown regulations, as we refer to it as a family meeting in South Africa. And I was on the news directly after the president had spoken, just to touch on the impact of the lockdown, the various lockdown levels on the property industry and uh, how it affects our retail sectors more specifically. But because on that afternoon, we had already seen some undesirable scenes coming through from KwaZulu Natal in Durban, uh, in Umlazi more specifically, um, I actually did take the time to say, I hope that our government will be proactive uh, in terms of security and securing our properties. But I also implored on our various communities to make sure that they protect these assets because these are the very same assets that bring services closer to them. Little did I know what was about to transpire the following day was something that nobody in this country was ready for. Now, to join me in this conversation and to really take you through the experiences of the team and the individuals who were so directly involved with all of what transpired 
is the broader team that I have with me. But um, as I call upon Teresa Terblanche, who is one of our divisional executives based in KZN, and she runs the coastal region for us. And she is with us with her broader team and she will introduce them as they come on. You know, we'd just like to get Teresa to get into the conversation and take you through by painting a picture of the start of the riots, you know, what were the signs that things were really, really getting out of control? How did you manage, you know, to restore normality, whether in that week or within those number of days? And, um, and as, as we talk us through it, uh, Teresa, it would be important to also just highlight to the members and the broadies that are here with us, what were some of the you know, supportive roles that were played by the broader business from a leadership point of view, from a group risk point of view, uh, from a human capital point of view, because there were many touch points during that week that really, really uh, came through as a way of support for us as property management. And for me, um, it was a terrible week where a lot of tears were shed and we'd just like to hear you touching on some of those moments. Thank you, over to you, Teresa. Thank you, Nakuli. Good morning, everyone. And thanks for spending time with us this morning at a real privilege to share all our knowledge and experiences with you that we've collected throughout this disastrous situation that occurred in KZN. Yes, I, I, I echo what Nakuli is saying. Nobody could have expected the, the magnitude of what happened. Nobody could have prepared for it adequately. Um, I think the the turning point for me was Sunday morning when that centre in Peter Maritzburg was hit. Um, then we realised we're in trouble. And obviously we then said, okay, let's sh strengthen the security. We started speaking to security guards, et cetera, and the security companies. Um, we bulked up, et cetera. However, unfortunately, when you are faced with 1,500 to 1,800 looters, they, there's not much you can do. And then you start realizing that the most important thing is to keep your, your security, your cleaners that was on site at, at that stage to and your staff safe, ride the wave and just stay on top of things and see where you can actually start getting involved um, and when we can start um, doing our jobs. Um, so for us as property management, um, our, our duties are to protect our tenants and make sure the shopper's environment is safe to shop in, as well as, as our buildings and to ensure optimum income for, for our landlord. So this was absolutely devastating to see the destruction of all those core functions that we are born and bred to do and which everybody in this team that's going to chat to you today is absolutely born to do. They're all naturals, they love what they do, so we all infringe in, in our business. Um, myself and a few people on this call, on this um, webinar has been privileged to manage probably the majority of the centers that was looted and burnt and, and damaged. So to us, it was on all emotional levels. But what did come to mind now when I listened to the anthem is, and when I looked at the pictures is how far we've come from three days, four days of total uselessness, useless feelings and feeling inadequate and not be able to do anything to rising and to seeing how amazing, innovative, creative, resourceful, resilient, all those things we are. Um, I would just want to take a few more moments to share a few stats with you and then I'm going to hand over to the team um, who's the real heroes and maybe just add that I'm the privileged person that's part of a team could think on their feet, that could uh, roll out the, re the repair, the cleaning process more magnificently than I could have ever imagined. So just a few stats. So we had 32 buildings that was affected in KZN that's managed by Brawl. Uh, 29 of them were retail buildings and the other three were industrial buildings, um, of which 37% uh, was uh, damaged by fire. Um, and two of them will not be trading between the next 12 and 18 months as well. Um, further to that, um, we had 470,000 square meters affected, uh, of which tenants returning line shop wise, 68 of them would possibly not return due to the magnitude of the repair time. 
um, which comes to about 4.5% of, of the total tenants affected and 1.1% of the total legible area. So at this moment, our loss of income is standing on 22 uh, million and it, it is quite a, um, a tremendous loss. Um, what I want to mention up front is that our landlords were extraordinary. They were supportive. We wanted to go to sites on many occasions. They refused point blank for us to go to site. Um, as Nakuli mentioned before I hand over to my team, um, HR Nolene was unbelievable. So she was there all the time chatting to us, touching base with us. Um, Jonathan Broll phoned us every day to see how we're doing. Um, Malcolm contacted us all the time. They were in touch as well as Nakuli. So from a leadership point of view, it was absolutely amazing. And from Bev, in terms of the risk um, point of view, there was a lot of leadership and guidance from them. So thank you very much on behalf of me and my team for all of that. I'm now going to hand you over to Marion Plint. Marion is the portfolio exec on the SA Core portfolio. This portfolio was affected. The was the first um, affected building that was hit was Mlazi Mega City, one one of the buildings in Marion's portfolio. And thereafter, the second building was also a SA Core building, which was Value Center. Marion, will you please introduce the rest of your team? And I'm handing over to you. Thank you very much, Teresa. Um, yes, a lot of the visuals that you saw at the beginning as well were of our SA Corporate Centers. Um, our landlord has eight retail centres in the region and five of those were impacted uh, by the events of, of those, those weeks that, that we faced. And I must say, being Gauteng based myself, um, we saw footage of trucks burning on Friday and, and didn't even begin to perceive the impact that was going to follow. Um, we obviously have a, a bigger team, um, but for the interests of the, the time limit on, on this session, and we're going to be featuring um, two properties in particular. Um, but just worth mentioning that in total, we have over 451 tenants that were impacted across the five properties. So with me today, I have Hope Kamala, who's our general manager of Amlazi Mega City, and 50 Griffiths, um, and Delon Bola, who is our regional ops manager. And I'm going to ask them both, starting with Hope and then following on with Delon, to share with us the experiences of the start, the early phases of the right, um, the initial actions that they took, um, how they've managed to restore normality, and what the most inspirational moments were during this process. So hope I hand over to you. Thank you. Good morning, uh, everybody. Um, I will be taking you through what transpired in Amlazi. Um, how it started was around um, on the 11th, around uh, five-ish in the afternoon, a, 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 a vehicle just came into V-section, um, bent the tires, and <clears throat> they started with shop rides because there's a super, as a big shop rides in, 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 in V-section which is the entrance and exit to Umlazi. And uh, Imeka City happened to be just five minutes away from, from the, 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 the V-section. So as they began at V-section, I was sitting outside because I also sit, uh, stay in the, in, in the in, in V-section. I could hear the noises. I, I saw them taking everything from ShopRite. It was within an hour, ShopRite was cleaned out. And then the next thing I could hear the crowd shouting, mega city is open. That when I knew it was over with my center because I could see the amount of people that we hear. And uh, I was in constant communication with our security manager. And at the time he already confirmed that they've already started with um, McDonald and, and Nando's. And as they walk through now throughout the, the entire center, it started around six o'clock and they go on the entire night. Um, and because of the roads were closed, I couldn't reach my center. I could only reach my center in the morning. I tried to be there as early as five o'clock. When I got there, the, 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 the center was already cleaned out. There was no clothes. There was nothing in 
all under 1050 shops. Um, at the time, yes, the police, obviously, as we, we, we had what was happening, our first response was to call the police, um, incre increase the guards, and we tried everything that was humanly possible, but even with that, nothing could stop because um, it shows that um, when people want to be against the law, they can be against the law and there's nothing that can stop them because all the other centers that were saved were saved by community members. So what was our greatest um, disadvantage is that as Umlaz in Mecca City, we are just outside of Umlaz, but yes, we are surrounded by informal segment. We are also surrounded by the, the hostels and all the people that live, thousands of people that live around there are not from KZN, most of them. So to them, it was not the matter of caring what will happen going forward, because at the end of the day, if KZN fall, they will go back to their own towns and, and, and provinces. So in that way, the Mlazi people were helpless. They couldn't reach to, 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 to help because already it was already damaged. And they, it, it went on, uh, it, it was hard. Uh, it was really painful to see everything that we, we love and we work dearly for being seen torn apart in front of you. Uh, we could try with the security because it, some of the security members couldn't even reach in time because there was no transport. Everything was, everything just stopped for like four days. There was no food supply. There was nothing that we could do. We watched these people tearing the building apart. All we could do is I gave the, the securities that I could, I was with, which were help, which we worked for almost 36, 24 hours as they couldn't go home. They couldn't do anything. And our mandate was to eliminate the fires because as we were in the building, they were trying to, put on the fires in different uh, 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 um, places. And all we do, all our mandate was to run uh, uh, push up the, the, the fires because the fire department also was not available to help. There was, we were just helpless. And what, what I saw the, that week was, it's something that nobody can explain. It's like people were like possessed no one cared and um, they all had no remorse of what was happening. So um, I don't know, it, it was something that was beyond, was beyond what we, we know. It was like we were in the movies, but we were live and we were there. And the effect of that immediately hit us all because within, uh, for weeks we had no bread, we had no milk, we had no petrol. There was a time where I was stuck for five hours trying to reach Westville, where uh, one of uh, our directors, um, Unico, um, uh, organized for us to get some food and supplies with other, other centers, because at the time we were not even allowed to, to leave Umlas. We were barricaded to stay there. Uh, but a true brawl, that's when I was so proud, guys, to be a brawlies, because they've organized for us through our cards. We were able to run through and get to places that we couldn't have if we were not members of brawl. And by then, we were able to get some food and petrol, and we were able to feed our families. And also, a special thank you to our, <clears throat> to our client, USA Corp also organizing uh, uh, vouchers for us. They organized vouchers for, the, for, the, for all of us. And we all had a thousand grand vouchers for pick and pay. In that way, we were able to eat and there was nothing. Even if you did have money, there was nothing that you could do with your money because there was just nothing there for you to buy. And there was just nothing. So thank you to the people and in that way, Nicole also assisted us. We started uh, the, the Amagwenya campaign, which we started now feeding the security, feeding the people that we are assisting us now to come back to normality because quickly after this whole thing, as everybody was suffering, 
all, all, all people now started feeling sorry and, 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 and wanting to assist. They were coming, community came in numbers to assist in cleaning. And within a, a space of three weeks, we were able to rebuild and we were able to start uh, um, looking positive and starting to rebuild the center. So it all happened so quickly. And the experience that I, I took from this was there's no way of, of, of um, going back to normality after this, obviously. But all we have to do is to learn to live with it, just like how we did with the COVID. Um, so what we can take forward also is to review our risk assessments and to review our environmental factors that we, we put on before, because obviously what was working um, uh, two months ago is no longer applicable now. So um, that's all we can take forward and learn from this and move forward as well as we strong people and our leadership. Marion was with me on the phone 24-7. Uh, Nicole, um, all the other executive, even from SA Corp, they were very supportive. Uh, we even had the support and the visits and the personal interview from the president of, of South Africa. And the mayor also came to, um, to also be with us. So we, we were, in a way, despite what was happening, all the negativity that was happening, there was some positivity that, was, uh, that you could take forward. And the good thing is that we are not looking at re rebuilding the center as we manage to, to make sure it was not banned, but now we are repairing. So it's, we are in a better position than other colleagues of mine who are sitting with, um, with banned buildings. So that's, that's about what happened in Amlazi. And thank you, thank you. Thanks so much, Hope. Yes, I, I think in the process we forgot to worry about ourselves. And um, I must just mention here that um, on the Thursday, when one of our shopping centers opened their checkers, Leanne Bailey and her husband, Clint Bailey, went and they shopped for all the Braille staff. Um, the baby food, baby formula, nappies, etc., has become critical amongst the staff. And they managed to go and purchase all these items and deliver them to the office, and everybody came and they collected it, yeah, together with the fact that we purchased food and stock and um, all sorts of supplies for the security on site because remember now it's been three days they can't move they can't leave site so they also didn't have food so we we bought them food and we had that delivered as well so thank you for touching on that hope and maybe if i can just in conclusion ask you um how would you rate your emotional well-being now opposed to five weeks ago when this happened seeing the <clears throat> The, 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 the quick turnaround change that is happening for me, it's, it's, it's amazing because the whole mindset of the people, the, 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 the tenants themselves as well, um, it, it was amazing because all my tenants were like, oh, we, we, we want to come back. We want our customers back. We want our employees not to lose their job. So for me, that was a win. Thank you. Thank you so much. Delon, we would love to hear from you and all your experiences during this time. Thank you very much, Teresa, and a very good morning to my fellow Brawlies. Um, I think Hope has taken you through, through a very descriptive uh, view of, uh, of, of the events, but I will touch on it from a um, region level as I represent uh, SA Corporate Region in KZN. So, just in terms of painting the picture, I hope it's quite correct that uh, the scene was set on the 11th of July with, in, with information flooding in from various media channels and law enforcement agencies of riot outbreaks in shopping malls in KZN. Thoughts flooded my mind at that time. Questions running through my mind were, are we next? Do we shut the malls down and batten down the hatches? Little did I know at the time, this was just the tip of the iceberg in terms of mixed emotions filled with anger, frustration, desperation, and finally, hope. Um, what was the first thing that we did in response to the chaos? Um, at this point, we had already shut down the um, SA corporate malls and we were bracing for an incident that would be one for the history books, one um, our children would read about. 
um, additional security being now on high alert as um, daylight drew to an end and malls being closed and law enforcement on standby. Albeit at this time, they already had their hands full. So it was, it was literally a waiting game, uh, hoping that we are not next, but also bracing ourselves for the storm that we will be withering for the next few days. In terms of re restoring normality, um, so in the midst of all of the chaos at, that was unfolding, property teams were now working around the clock via voice calls, WhatsApp groups, Zoom sessions with, with our clients. Um, but as, as in chaotic times is when a true team pulls together with all hands on deck and steering the ship out of the storm in the same direction. To restore normality in this situation, knowing that KZN was brought to its knees is a feeling of helplessness that falls over you, knowing that you've exhausted every possible avenue with law enforcement, private security, and disaster management. You are now at their mercy. The goal was to stay motivated, keep the team going, the on-site soldiers safe, and save what we have left. Property is insured, but lives are not. With armed reinforcements now, now being placed and uh, at our remaining malls and the CPF forums now manning KZN, this was our time to now take KZN back. Some inspirational moments that I would like to uh, touch on. Well, Brawlies are very resilient people and Brawl encapsulates that with its leaders that shine in the face of challenges. With support and encouragement from my portfolio executives, my divisional directors, um, Theresa and Nicole, they, it, it was just constant phone calls, making sure that personally I was okay, and then offering support as to how uh, we can better manage, we can, we can have sessions, we can brainstorm, uh, but it was just constant support. And then obviously just touching on what Hope said earlier in terms of the meal vouchers and so forth, it was a juggling act trying to manage um, security, uh, malls, and also trying to keep your personal family safe, you know, trying to, trying to ensure that you have enough supplies for them. So it was a, literally a 24 hour, seven day a week, no sleep kind of kind of situation um, but we have pulled through and now we are looking to the future um, most of our malls are re uh, are repairing uh, except uh, except value center which which was burnt unfortunately so that's probably a 12 to 18 month uh, rebuild uh, but we are optimistic and our client is very grateful that brawl has um, with the storm and that we've come out and we're looking forward to rebuilding and enhancing what we once had to build better assets. Thank you, Delon. Yes, I think we need to add to that and just say that um, the army only arrived on the Wednesday. Um, so the Wednesday was, oh, sorry, the Tuesday evening, the, uh, the 13th, they arrived. They went to one of our malls out in Stanger um, but yeah, unfortunately, um, they were not um, allowed to do much, but their presence did make a difference and it halted some of the looting and, and setting a light of the buildings. Thank you. Marian, um, Amani, over to you. Uh, I think we need to just maybe play the video now in terms yes. of Value Centre. Yes, Thank that's you. Great. Thank you, Teresa. A lot of the visuals you've seen this morning of Springfield Value Centre is the centre that was the most badly damaged in our portfolio. As Delon mentioned, it's pretty much a rebuild situation um, in almost the entire area of the centre. Um, Charmaine Ramsaha is our property manager for that building and has a, a landlord meeting today, so wasn't able to join us. But we'd like to play a clip of her East Coast radio interview um, because that sums up her experience perfectly. Thank you. So as you know, there are cleanups all over KZN. Today, the big cleanup is at Springfield Value Center. Now, last time I chatted to center manager Charmaine Ramsahai at Springfield Value Center, we were there for the launch of their rebrand and new logo. Today, unfortunately, different circumstances. Charmaine, when you first heard that Springfield Value Center had been looted and then burnt down, 
What was the very first thing that went through your mind? When I first heard, I was in total shock and complete disbelief. And then came the helplessness when I was on the phone trying to contact the fire brigade and the police service and not getting any response because they were obviously busy attending to all the other incidents. And then came the videos and the photos being shared in the media. And these only intensified these feelings. And just watching the center being destroyed was devastating. I think it was about a month ago that together with you and your team, we celebrated our rebrand. And to see it vandalized and burnt was just unreal. It really was incredibly distressing to see the center on fire and knowing there was nothing I could do to prevent it from burning. Then seeing it for the first time in real life, describe what you saw and how it made you feel. I can't begin to tell you how I felt. The sheer magnitude of the damage is just indescribable. Several of the stores are completely burned and most of this damage could not really be seen in the footage that was shared in the media. So walking through the shopping center and walking past each store I realized this destruction will not only affect those staff members but also their families and you just feel the unfairness of it all. It really is utterly and truly devastating. So today is the day the big cleanup. The public have come together, shown their support. Please give us the details though, what to bring, where to go and how to comply with COVID regulations. This cleanup is the first step in getting our centre back up and running. And I wholeheartedly thank all the volunteers, our tenants, their friends and families, and the East Coast Radio team for assisting us in rebuilding our shopping centre. This show of support is incredible, and I will certainly remember this forever. In response to what to bring, we have procured some brooms and gloves and spades, but please feel free to bring your own. And most importantly, remember we are still in the midst of the pandemic, so wear a face mask that covers both your nose and your mouth and ensure that social distancing is practiced. Hand sanitizer is available and we implore you to make use of this. Seeing the masses come together for the cleanup, it must give you some glimmer of hope, right? A glimmer of hope is definitely an understatement. I'm simply ecstatic to see the outpouring of support that we have received and I'm confident that with the assistance of our community, our tenants and shoppers, we will get Springfield Value Center back to its former glory. The question is, where to from here? Well, I've gone through the stages of grief and I've finally reached acceptance. Meeting with the asset manager this week makes me very optimistic that we will rebuild and repair and we'll come back stronger and better than before. The center will open in phases due to construction and the extent of damages per store. We are working closely with our tenants and we cannot wait to reopen all our stores again. Please follow our social media pages to stay updated. And we sincerely hope that our shoppers, tenants and the community continue to support us along this journey as we rebuild Springfield Value Centre. Well, you have my support, all of us at ECR and the whole of KZN. Charmaine, really am thinking of you during this time and we will get through this. Thanks so much for your time. That was Centre Manager Charmaine Ramsahai from Springfield Value Centre. Last Sunday, I was at a... Thank you very much for that clip. It was absolutely magnificent. And something Shamayne said in her interview just hit home. I was fortunate to be able to get to site the Thursday morning. And obviously you, you can't enter. Um, it was just glass pieces, etc. And I walked the site and I started sobbing by the gate. And then I walked, it's quite a, it's a square center and it's quite a long site. And you just saw shoes laying everywhere, tin food, mannequins, tables half burnt, clothes still laying on the tables half burnt. It was absolutely devastating to see the runes. Um, and yeah, I agree, you cannot see the, the real visuals on the photos and on the videos. Marion, would you like to share to us what your um, vision is in terms of the future together with your asset management? Um, because it's not all doom and gloom. Um, there's a great opportunity for um, your client to rebuild Value Center to even more greater than what it's ever been. So we would like to hear what their action plan is taking the center forward. Mm, absolutely. As you said, Teresa, it's an opportunity to reconfigure space, bring in tenants who've been waiting for, for premises at the center, refresh the brand, address uh, structural issues that were historic issues that we were living with and we now have an opportunity to correct. And imagine having a center where every single tenant has a brand new fit out at the same time. It's, it's not something that normally happens except for the initial opening of the center in its first day of trade ever. And we have that opportunity. So it's amazing. And we are backed by an amazing team. Um, the, the two team members that have spoken today are one of many 
and they've just been absolutely exceptional. And we are also blessed in terms of our, our landlord and our asset manager for Coastal, who's adopted an extremely positive approach. His, his words to us are, I look forward to building, rebuilding this region with you. Thank you, Marion. And just a special thanks from me and your team for the leadership, the inspiration and everything that you've done for us and still do for us. We so appreciate it. I'm now going to introduce you to Miriam Omerji. So Miriam runs the Inuka Emira portfolio on the retail side in KZN. And that was the second hard, harshly affected portfolio. And she's going to share with us their experiences. And also, I think um, the, the successful story yeah, that I'd like her to share with you as well is the short time we took to get most of their centers up and running. Thank you, Miriam. Hi, Teresa. So from our side, we have a portfolio of 28 buildings, 14 of which is based in KZN. Um, seven of our buildings were impacted, one on the side of Amira, which is the Springfield Retail Center. Um, the other six are KZN based. I do have our team who will be just talking through the buildings. Um, we will talk on Inuka first, and Mike will just share with us his journey over the one week. Mike? Okay, and thank you for everybody for joining. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was quite a, a journey, like you said. Um, when it started on a Monday in the rural buildings, you don't really know what was going on up until you received the, the images and the footage from security that's on site and you know, it started off quiet and then all of a sudden chaos uh, broke loose people started eating the liquor stores first and from there it just spread out to the other tenants in the buildings and it was one phone call after the other from one building to the next building you know, and so six buildings being it uh, almost simultaneously you know puts a lot of pressure and you know you sit and you feel hopeless at that, that current stage. And on the Tuesday, the 13th, when you receive footage of your building burning, um, you know, you, there's, there's no words to describe it. There's, you feel like there's nothing you can do but just look on these masses, what's eating your building. But I must say, with all of that, we had huge, huge support from our tenants, our landlords and the entire team of Inuka that um, stood together and worked together to get through this. And like Mariam said, and Teresa also, a lot of these uh, buildings are up and running again. I think the last one will be up and running this week with the majority of our anchor tenants uh, trading already. And I must take my hats off to our line tenants that came to the party and opened up very quickly and work together with our cleaning, with our security and getting the centers cleaned up. Now, like I said, they remote areas and it wasn't easy to get to them. We were only able to get to these buildings a week after the looting now, to make sure that it is safe to, to get there and to be able to walk around safely without feeling in, in, endangered while you're at the premises. Thank you, Mike. If I can just add on to what you had said, we did have significant support from our landlord as well, who undertook the building visits with Brawl. And there was a lot of optimism following those building visits, where they did identify areas where they can um, revisit the tenant mix, work on the aesthetics of the building. And Mike, from my side, thank you so much. The team worked incredibly hard to get the buildings prepared from the Monday to put in security measures, additional security, try and lock down the buildings as best as we could on short notice, most of which was very effective. We had a lot of support from the taxi associations, which protected a lot of our buildings. And it's that relationship that the Brawl team has with the taxi associations that definitely um, assisted in securing the buildings. If I can now go over to the Amira side and have Bernice just chat to us a little bit about Springfield Retail Center. Hi, good morning all. 
I manage the retail center. I wish I was given the opportunity of letting each one of you plug into the emotions that happened from the Sunday through to the Tuesday. Unfortunately, I get to paint the picture. So I hope you guys just understand what was actually transpiring. So on the Sunday morning, we started receiving several notifications via social media. Um, we are plugged into the KZN Business Centers Group in KZN. So we were, information was being filtered through that something was transpiring. However, we did not know it was to that magnitude. Um, the Sunday afternoon, approximately two o'clock, we were alerted that Value Center was being targeted and that prompted us to close down the retail center. Hoping this averted all the direct looters coming into the center and obviously the main was to get the customers and the tenants to disperse from the center as soon as possible. Unfortunately, the Monday morning on the 12th at half past one in the morning, the looters finally got through pay into retail center, cleaning the center out completely. There was nothing left unturned. They took cash registers, they took mannequins from windows, fixtures, fittings, whatever was available, they took it and they left. This looting continued throughout the day. Um, just various groups of guys coming in, taking what they needed to take and leave. There was little that the security could actually do to prevent this, except keep safe themselves, which we encouraged them to do. Unfortunately, with the looting and everything taking place, it was then the tenants that we needed to inform what was actually happening. We were the only point of call for tenants. So we created a WhatsApp group where we were trans giving the tenants the information as and when it took place. The information was not good. Um, it obviously raised a lot of questions and prompted more phone calls than necessary. But we had to keep them informed. I think it's their property. They needed to understand what was happening. And this also helped to calm a lot of the tenants because they were getting minute by minute information. As in when things transpired, they were being informed. We had a tenant um, that was in Italy and unfortunately relied totally on my information. So I had to give him the bad news that his store was looted and everything was gone. And then we were actually, I was grateful the Monday afternoon. I thought the worst was over. I was grateful that the looters had come and left, that there was no customers, there was no one on site to be injured. Unfortunately, they returned throughout that evening and on the Tuesday, they came back and started various fires within the shops at the center. The security managed to put out those little fires. Unfortunately, two o'clock that afternoon, they started a fire in Mamambo store, which is a new store. And the fires rapidly spread through that side of the building. Unfortunately, my tenant from Italy was one of the shops that was burnt. So I had the pleasure of sending him a WhatsApp and saying, call me when you get a chance. I, I do apologize, I need to speak to you. And just breaking the news to him. I mean, these are the guys that battled with COVID. They were just starting to put their feet out. They were not trading fantastically. Turnovers were not good by any means. But these are the guys that were just starting to get out there. And then they've lost everything. So to cry with the tenants and to watch what they go through, it was an experience. Um, yeah, it was totally another experience. Thank you so much, Bernice, for sharing. Um, it, it was very traumatic. I know that um, specifically for you. And yeah, reliving this is, is quite challenging. Miriam, I'm handing back to you. Uh, thank you, Teresa. Um, from my side, before we go over to Andrew, I think um, my entire team would like to express a big thank you to you, Teresa, for all that you did during the time, for working together with us throughout the week, for keeping us informed, for offering us support. We did receive the same support from our head office. And just on an overall view for the future, the entire team is positive and very committed, and that's echoed by our landlord as well. So Andrew, if I can ask you, 
from your side, just to tell us a little bit about your experience over the week. Andrew? Here we go. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I, I was just saying I, I obviously want to um, just uh, echo the words by Bernice. Um, but I think one of the worst things for me was uh, I was in a position to um, to watch these this looting take place uh, via my, my cell phone as we we had CCTV cameras connected to our phones. And to see these hundreds of people walking in with something and going and loading it off at a truck or a taxi and then coming back for more uh, was was absolutely appalling. Um, the, uh, the the issue was, however, that uh, as 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 uh, Bernice also said that uh, after the looting, we thought, okay, look, uh, maybe the the worst is over. Um, but when we heard that one of the buildings in close proximity of ours uh, was set alight, uh, we obviously were selfishly praying uh, that it wouldn't happen to us. Um, but that hope, unfortunately, too, too soon dissipated when our security, uh, although they tried hard and in vain, as uh, Bernie said, uh, to douse the fires, that uh, the main fire spread and it spread very, very quickly. <laughs> Um, I was fortunate to be able to uh, visit the site the following day after the fire. Um, and uh, someone once said to me that, um, and I don't know if this was a, if it was a sadist speaking or a realist, but he said to me, when you uh, expect the worst, really think of it as the worst that can happen. Uh, but being at the center and seeing what had transpired uh, could never ever uh, match what I really saw. It was Andrew. Absolute... Thank, you, thank you so much for yeah. all sharing sharing it with us. Um, we really appreciate um, everything you've done. Um, the panelists um, are pressing us for time, okay. so so um, I just want to say thank you very much. And I'm going to hand over to um, Mahen on the Fairvex portfolio, Mahen. Just give us a brief in terms of your portfolio. Good morning, everyone. Um, I manage the Fairways portfolio, and we were affected uh, with the riots and looting across KZN and Kateng, with the 11 buildings uh, being looted, vandalized, and in some instances, partially burnt. Um, I'm going to share the same sentiments as the remainder of the team, uh, just due to time constraints. That we sat and we watched helplessly from our phones and media and waiting for, for uh, this crowd to either disperse and or hoping for them to disperse. And unfortunately that, that didn't occur. And the most devastating part was getting the images and looking at buildings that we manage and maintain at such high standard being brought down to ash, literally. And uh, you felt really helpless at that point because you're now thinking, your mind is running through so many different criteria as to how to rebuild, what do we do next? But fortunately, um, we had a very strong and courageous, courageous team behind us, uh, including the landlord who offered their full support and provided us with full mandate to uh, secure, repair and rebuild. And it's because of that and our dedication from our contractors and our team that we were able to rebuild within a two, two and a half week period uh, in order to get our tenants back in line. Um, just, just what happened at our, our first points was obviously our security and staff that were on site. We needed to make sure that they were safe. So we immediately got them into civilian clothing and we got them to monitor from a safe distance and just provide us updates. Once that was done, we were only able to follow standard procedure and call in SAPS, law enforcement to assist, but unfortunately, they were so 
thinly spread that they could only get to us at a certain point and um, the remainder of the work obviously had to be done with the CPF and our, and, and our security companies. Um, we're slowly getting back to normal, uh, normality as tenants are coming in and starting to trade. And uh, we just hope that going forward now, we've identified the risks and our weak areas and that we're able to look at this and just strengthen everything that we need to at our buildings to try and avoid or prevent something of this magnitude happening again. Mayan, thank you very much. And I just in brief closure, I just want to mention that eight of your buildings that were hit were up and running within the two, first two, two and a half weeks. So thank you very much for all you've done. Nakuli, thank you for um, facilitating us and I'm handing it back to you. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, thank you to everyone who has shared with us thus far. I'm well aware that we are running over time. I just wish to implore on all the Brawleys to please stay with us a few minutes longer as we recap with the other members of the team. And also just to know that we are still open to a Q&A and we look forward to hearing and engaging with yourselves. So I will hand over to you, Nicole, and just make you aware that time is not on our side as you call on your team members just to share very briefly an overview of your experience at that time. Thank you. Thanks, Nkuli. I think uh, experiences like this always give opportunity and time for reflection. And uh, the two centers that were impacted uh, um, for, on the for Bukile portfolio had both been redeveloped um, probably not even two years ago. A year ago on the 3rd of July, the clothing stores reopened after COVID lockdown levels um, and saw unprecedented footfalls. And a year and a week later, um, the 12th place, amazing unrelenting support of our, of our clients. If anything, I think this, this proved um, a seamless strengthening of the partnerships we experience from service provider right through to client, with Brawl being the glue that holds all of that together. Um, with, without further ado, I'm going to ask um, Adele, what inspirational moments did you experience through all of this craziness, Adele? You know, I remember receiving emails and WhatsApps from you at 2, 3 in the morning, updates never ending. Tell us, um, yeah, tell us about the, the, the inspirational side of, of how you came out of this. Um, so firstly, so this is actually ironic, Nicole. We have a team on site, Michael Larson. He's our general manager and Robin Naidu, who is our ops team. We actually call them the Batman and Robin team as they could solve any problem. If it was four o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock at night, that we were constantly talking. And the most inspiring of that is even when the team on the ground was walk, working 24 seven, we, and when everything started calming down, then the report started and they would just say, yes, what can we do next? Irrespective of what you've asked them, they've just rose to every occasion. And um, also our security on site, how they just um, did more than was asked of. And the simple thing I wanna share is the total garage on the pine crest wasn't looted. And simple things like we ran out of um, photocopier paper. We didn't have a photo um, copier on site and we, and we couldn't get um, people to assist us. And total garage just ju jumped in and assisted with small things like making, making photocopies. Believe it or not, you couldn't make in Durban, in a near vicinity of Pinecrest, you know, and sitting with your exec and yourself, Nicole and George Heineke and Tien's ex team also need to be mentioned. Five o'clock, everybody was making plans, strategizing and realizing we are a team. We are a great, great team. And it's such a privilege and honor to be part of the Brownies team. Thanks, Adele. And on that note, I just want to extend a very quick thank you to um, the, the team in Westville that opened specially for Hope um, on the morning, um, on the Tuesday morning, I think, to allow her 
shop for the security guards and and start uh, making sure that they had some food as well so thank you to leanne bailey and and the team um, on spume's side and tanya um you you all across portfolios we just really really pulled together which was just awesome as well thanks adele i'll move across very quickly to dion um dion on daviton um there was quite a lot of damage uh we were just starting to to look at redevelopment there again so the site establishment i think had just taken place um give us a picture of what you saw and and how things happened there Thank you, Nicole. Yes, so um, obviously, you know, with uh, with following the news and social media, we we picked up that uh, uh, the situation in KZN was moving towards Gauteng. Uh, got heads up from Vusi, who's our operations manager, who's also standing in as, uh, as interim CM uh, at, at at Daviton. He was in in the city of Joburg on the Sunday and said, "Guys, things are getting out of hand here." and you know it might be spreading so amongst the team we made a call to immediately get hold of security on site brief them um get them on high alert place additional guards on site contacted the saps spoke to station commanders asked them to just you know be aware we're not you're not experiencing anything at that stage but guys heads up um we're going to press on your number if uh, if anything is uh, you know un untoward happens um so it was pretty calm during sunday night monday morning 2 30 uh part of, part of my french all hell broke loose the guys uh just outnumbered security our guards obviously weren't weren't armed um it's not a policy that we generally apply in our shopping centers and uh they were just forced out because the looters were armed um so they came in with full purpose it was planned um you know no one generally does window shopping 2.30 in the morning. Uh, smashed entrance windows, doors, got in, looted shops. Um, one of the worst ones was uh, was Jet. Literally, I think the shelving and hangers is the only thing that was left in that entire store. Um, and yeah, it's about went on for about three hours. Uh, they started, uh, we obviously immediately got hold of SAPs, try to get them to site got hold of uh, our security senior management uh, on response companies. The situation was such that they couldn't actually get to the center. Uh, SAPS is a minute's walk from Davyton Mall. They couldn't get there. They didn't have enough vehicles. They were responding all over Davyton. Um, the uh, security company, the on response company, couldn't get to the center because the roads had been barricaded. Rocks had been rolled across the routes. Uh, tires burning, so but the guys had to literally traverse um, all of Davyton to eventually get to the centre. Uh, when they arrived, we started taking control. Once we had our armed guys on site, senior security management, um, the, the the looters then, you know, left the centre. So I think by five thirty that morning, they 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 left, and we spent the the entire team uh, spent the next hours in that day uh, planning for the next attack because we had intel on the ground that it was going to happen again um and yeah. it did so uh, but we were prepared second time around um we had by then got saps SANF on site and a whole barrage of armed guards um we were under attack there was live live rounding um live round shooting but uh at all all um uh calm down at the end thank you dion um and well done to you and your team you guys absolutely rock and yeah good luck we we were up and running in an crazily short space of time so yeah, 10, 10 days uh, trading yeah well yeah okay. thanks thank guys you. and coolie back to you thank you for this opportunity of of, of letting us share share a bit of that mm -hmm. crazy time Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I'm aware we are now beyond the hour. I do implore our brollies to just stay on with us for the next few minutes, just so that we do a roundup and get, make to, get to make sure that everybody has had a chance to just share. And I will ask them to please just go through it very, very briefly. Uh, won't you please come in? Because you are in KZN. I just want to make sure that 
we cover uh, KZN and then we are going to move very swiftly after you have shared, we will move to Charlene, uh, who is on the resilient portfolio and she can share with us more from an inland perspective. Thanks. Thank you, Goli. And hello to all the prolies. Um, I work for the Fevis portfolio. So as Mahen had said, 11 of our buildings were affected, but we had such phenomenal support from the landlord. And they supported not only us, but the tenants as well. And so they made a decision very early on for, for them to take the responsibility of rebuilding and ensuring that all of the showfronts are repaired and all of the work gets done so that people can be back in trading. And we were back trading over in, in over a week. From the 26th of July, we were back on, on site and people were starting to trade. And it's been going well ever since. 95% of our tenants are back. So that is exciting uh, because everyone is just keen to come back and everyone is keen to make a, a, an, an even better situation of, of what we were. So we are eternally grateful to the landlord for the support and the support that they've shown, especially to the independent tenants, because we know that a lot of them, even though the list says they must have insurance, unfortunately don't have insurance. And so our landlord is working together with the Department of Economic Development and the IDC to see what interventions can be done so that we can support all of those small guys. So the team has been phenomenal. I appreciate the team so much. Everyone is pulled together and we are grateful for Nolin as well and the support that she has shown and including all of the exec. So thank you so much guys. And let's keep on moving and let's keep on learning. And hopefully the learnings that we have this time can be used all over Africa by the rest of the prolies. Thanks guys. Thank you. Shalene, won't you please just share with us from your end uh, on the resilient portfolio very briefly. Thanks, Nkuli. Um, hi, Broly. So just to put it into perspective and some context, um, the Brol Gauteng office manages 21 of the resilient retail buildings across the country. And fortunately, only one of our buildings was looted, that being Mum's Mall um, in Mamelodi. Mamelodi is in the northeast of the city of Tuani in Gauteng. Um, the mall is 60, sorry, 78,000 squares, and we have 166 tenants, of which the majority, I would say 90%, are made up of nationals. So just from the team cohesion and the camaraderie that happened over these few days was amazing. Um, everyone just pulled together. Uh, the center and operational managers stood their ground. They refused to go home. Um, most of them were on site for well over 72 hours, um, having power naps or cat naps, if you want to call it, in the security control room. Even though, you know, from, from our brawl side and from our landlord side, we were encouraging them to go home and to rather be safe. They, they simply refused. Um, there was the support we received both internally and externally from our clients on emergency WhatsApp groups that were formed was amazing. Um, the constant encouragement, involvement, and the sharing of ideas um, on these forums was phenomenal. And I mean, this was going on 24 hours a day, right through the night. You're having directors of listed funds communicating and offering guidance. Um, I truly feel that this constant communication and guidance on decisions that had to be made on the spot is what carried us through this. And, you know, from a broad point of view, we just want to thank our team on the ground, um, our national operations manager, uh, Jan Fisser, as well as our portfolio manager, uh, Jackie Fisser, and then the center manager, Bafana Radebi, and um, our operations manager, Joshua Mabeli, as well as Mutum Kozi. Thanks, guys. Um, you were truly inspirational. And um, the, the unity that came through this this terrible time is something that I think we'll all continue to build on and, and, and follow through with this trajectory. Um, so yeah, that's all I have from my side on Mum's Mall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do wish to remind the Brawleys that at the end of this session, there will be a roll of all the names across the PM team of all the people who had all hands on deck who helped us get through this very difficult period. 
two more people to go. Nadir, very quickly, I'd like you to share with us and you will be followed by Leanne, who is not least. Thanks, thanks, Nadir. Morning all. I'm putting you on the spot and giving you no more than two minutes. <laughs> um, I just wanna to touch that um, the portfolio that we manage uh, in Brawl is very dynamic and different. It's a sectional title portfolio. So it's very different um, in terms of its structure where we have individual sections that are managed that are owned um, and when we had our looting event on the 13th of July it was very difficult to communicate with everyone at the same time we had we've used communication mediums like whatsapp email um, but the best was getting everyone together on site where we had a rally style meeting um, I sort of a bucky and we just told everyone basically, this is the devastation that happened. And everyone came together and we cleaned up the site and we got contractors on board uh, very quickly. And I think within a space of 72 hours, we were back up and running on the sites that were allowed to trade. Um, it's, it has been a very difficult road. I've never experienced something like this before in my life. And it's something I really never wish to experience again. So true. I think that that holds for many of us, Nadir, and thank you for that share. Leanne, you are the last one, certainly not the least. Please just take us through some of your emotions in that time. Um, from, from our side, um, we had the looting took place for about 36 hours in um, my centre. Um, Eventually, on Wednesday afternoon, um, the last of the looters left. I think mainly because there was nothing left to loot. Um, we started our cleanup process on Thursday. On Thursday, we already had 100 cleaners on site, along with our um, contractors measuring shop fronts. Um, I managed to get through to the site on Friday. And amazingly, <laughs> if you looked in the center, despite the broken shop fronts, and obviously the, the mess within the 10 premises, our common areas were spotless. Um, we were fortunate enough, enough to, for our anchor, one of our anchor checkers to open within 10 days. So the support we received from our contractors was incredible. Um, it was inspirational. When checkers opened and um, when checkers opened, they always, um, as a team, come out and sing um, the national anthem. It was very, very emotional. And the staff, the checkers staff specifically, were just so grateful for everything that the centre had done to get up and running so quickly, um, because obviously their livelihoods were also affected. So it was moving, it was touching, um, it was a horrific experience, but um, we survived, which we're very grateful for. That's it, thank you. We certainly survived. Thank you so much. I think that we couldn't have done it without the support of the broader Brawl business. I myself uh, took quite a number of calls that week of support and just checking in. You know, I remember one specific phone call from Toby where I actually could not even speak. You know, uh, it was all tears all around. But I think at this stage, we can agree that if we were not all muted uh, as per these platforms require us to be, we would be applauding and applauding at how we have made it through and made it and come out on the other side, not only having been very resilient, but having endured and having had the tenacity to keep a business up and running thereafter and being able to rebuild and repair as the team have made mention. I worried tremendously about you know, jobs and not just for Brawleys, but for the country at, uh, uh, at large. And hopefully with the rebuild, we are able to bring back as many jobs as possible into the system. The disruption of COVID was hugely impactful in our division as PM and the further disruption of the riots really set us back in a great way. But we are optimistic and we are on the path of remaining a steady business, one that can still be relied upon by our various clients. I think that the share that came through 
from group risk regarding Nigeria and how they experienced the riots, those learnings were very, very important for us. And they really gave us some light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm very grateful to our group risk for having put those shares together. Human capital and the core series events that have continued since that time up to now on a weekly basis, those have been really good for our staff morale and for making sure that people still keep sane in the midst of all of the madness and all the chaos that goes on. And I'm grateful that Group X call did heed to our call when we said employee well-being is at the core of our, of our staff and their sanity. And they came through with those core series, which have been hugely beneficial, which I hope that the broad PM team and broad business at large is able to attend on a weekly basis. The Rebuild SA campaign, um, I don't know what we could have done if not all the South Africans decided to come together, all hands on deck like they did the South African Taxi Association and the various stakeholders and the communities and our suppliers they were hugely impactful in making sure that we turn things around. So in conclusion, I really, really wish to thank you. I wish to thank the team uh, for having had this discussion with us, being so frank, being so open, being uh, so, so, so open in sharing your experiences with us. To our fellow colleagues, uh, we are grateful for the support that you have provided us throughout this period. And uh, I could not uh, go away without thanking our shareholders, our board of directors, our colleagues at Group Support Services, and our group CEO, whose support, encouragement, and leadership carried us through this very difficult time. Now, please pay attention to the role of names that will appear at the end of this session now. These names represent every single Broly who was directly involved in rebuilding together. And we couldn't have mentioned all the names here during our discussion, but that role will come up now. Until the next webinar, thank you, thank you. May our progressiveness never wane. Remember that whilst we are apart, we must remain together. Goodbye all, but please, please watch the names as we roll, uh, the names of all the different brollies that took part in this important rebuild. Thank you. Oh, uh -huh.